What's up out there? Welcome back to the Thursday edition of Corked Stats, powered by the Mayo Media Net here on YouTube, presented by Jock Market, the very best brand new daily fantasy app where Wall Street meets Main Street and you can actually make money. Download the app for free. They're going to match the first hundred bucks for free. And if it's free, it's for me. We're up in the Jock Market every single day, making money, unlike in DraftKings where the you know, fact of the matter is, you're going to go home with empty pockets most of the time. Why even bother with that? We get to pick the players we want and exactly how much we lever them. Come on, let's get it. We got a nice receipt from yesterday. We're getting back on the horse. Jazz Chisholm playing flute for us there. Finished as the second player on the board. This was the afternoon slate. I didn't get to the PMs, but sometimes there is overlap. And I fully encourage people to get into the afternoon slates. Sometimes there's not as much action, right? People kind of having their eye off that for a bit. And the reason I have the full ticket here is there are two things. One, I wanted to show that for the audio only listeners, you could see I have a little receipt up here. It's Chisholm, Jeffers, and Sanchez. There were two quick things here. One was that Sanchez was not very good, particularly, and still returned plus 15%. Right? So that is not something that exists on any other daily fantasy platform. The other reason I put up Jeffers was that sometimes if you find your orders are in nice and clean, you can go back to the total list and just look and see if there are any at bats out there that are just too cheap. The twins were in a good spot. We liked them. We mentioned it. And just as an ancillary piece, you go back. Jeffers was like one of the lowest cost players on the entire slate. Boom. We hit him. He like tripled up. And there we go. I feel like we're getting back into the groove of things. The betting side's been tough, but that's what life is in betting, right? That's why the risk management, we talk about it more than we talk about who's going to win the game because it's that much more important. All right. Today, daily is really really tough it's a very short slate so i have been checking the separation here so we have two slates one the ipo is 12 25 with a 12 35 start and then the second one is at 710 for 710 i think it's four and four tip here and this goes for all daily platforms maybe outside of total base betting which this also applies to and it's i pull back on the risk when it comes to the small slates, you need to be more accurate. The ownerships are higher, right? The leverage is harder to sink your teeth into. But remember, one reason the greater than sign jock market, everything else, is because if a player does end up cheap, it means there is no interest, right? In DraftKings, you don't know what the ownership is because anybody and their mom can identify the cheapest player. In jock market, if a player is cheap, once demand comes in, the price goes up. So, right, there you go. Head on a swivel. 3-6. I mean, there, like I said, there's really not much going on today. Why I read you out the pitching matchups. It's Montgomery versus Zimmerman. Yankees and Orioles could be tough. It's Darvish versus Kyle Gibson. That one could be tough. Tyler Molly versus Cal Contrell. They've both been okay. The offenses are just not right. The total is really low. I think maybe that's where we'll get our runs today. And then Dakota Hudson versus Chris Bassett, another one. Super low total that I think will end up going over. But it really just more of a function of the total and maybe even the bullpens than <clears throat> anything else. Excuse me. So I, I, on this early slate, maybe we're looking again, like I said, in that Cincinnati-Cleveland game. The game's not even in Cincinnati. I had my eyes on Fran Mill, Reyes, Tyler Molly. He's had a little bit of a problem spotting the fastball, though he's been... I, I think he suffered from some bad luck and then again playing in Cincinnati, which will hurt you. But let's look at Fran Mill again in the early set. I may not be too into the daily plays there. We have a couple bets on the early board. I know I generally focus the bets for later on so people could come home and do their commute, but I picked plays that you could bet individually because there just really is nothing to choose from today. There's only, I think there's only two or three games on the 7 o'clock slate. Four maybe, and only two or three of them were posted, right? I mean, when there's any kind of question marks, the betting board is not up as early as I am. They're not necessarily looking to give away their money. So, fantasy stacks, a little tough. The nighttime, that's the one we want to be looking at. The nighttime slate opens up for us just a touch. I know our boy Gas Can Vinny V is out there for the White Sox up against Carlos Hernandez and the Royals with Cheese. He's had some serious struggles also. So I would think that's the game we're going to be looking to backfill into, but I would imagine everyone is. So again, keep your eye on the pricing and the leverage. That's really going to matter. George Kirby and the Mariners against 
Rich Hill and Boston. Boston starting to roll. A touch Pavetta looked incredible yesterday. Zach Gallen and the Diamondbacks against Stroman and the Cubs. That one could be a little scoring. Really tough. Good pitching matchup there. And then Houston against Glenn Otto. Probably be looking for the Astros there. So it, this one a little less specific than generally because I don't really know how the lineups and the action is going to play out. But I know we're going to be looking to get up against Vinny V. Give me the double wit, right? So wit Merrifield and Bobby Witt Jr. And then if uh, Rivera is in there, that is one of the nicer things about the smaller slate on jock market is the lesser players will make it. So a guy like Rivera may not be interesting, but again, if there aren't enough starters, their whole, entire price is just going to go up. Meaning I generally talk about it in low, medium, and high settings, 750, 550, 350, and you can kind of figure it out. Though I do do rankings, <clears throat> excuse me, on Twitter and the Patreon page. But really good players, 750, good players, 550, bad players, 350. So a guy like Rivera would generally be at the bottom setting. We would never want to pay more than $4 for a guy like him. Today, I wouldn't be surprised if the average starter, if any starter, I should say, the floor price is over 5 bucks, and then it be, kind of becomes tough. I know you need less, but baseball is always a chance of hanging not only is zero but a minus records of strikeouts is that you could end up below the people that don't even play and that's awful right so we want to be careful of that so let's keep an eye on those guys there so we'll be backfilling into that game for sure and then again Houston Astros keep an eye on them after getting slapped around by Pavetta the night after exploding look for Houston to kind of tee off on Otto he has really struggled with the home run so that's where I'll be looking tonight in jock market let's get into the big one today which is fantasy uh, welcome aboard all the new fantasy listeners I know we got some because I've been getting some pretty cool feedback you know because we're trying to do everything I know people see my work and sometimes I don't even know how to put it. Maybe they think because of the high stakes pl play I'm involved in generally that I'm not trying to cater to everybody. But the fantasy end, we really are trying to do 10, 12, and 15 league kind of viable stuff. Today's no different. So Monday, it's everything. It's all the weekend because I haven't seen you. All the news and the notes, injuries, call-ups, plus platoons, and two starts. I know it's a mouthful, but that's exactly what we're doing. Really bringing the heat on Monday to get you fully caught up to speed, put the show on while you're setting your lineups and stuff like that. I, I know we've highlighted a couple guys to get away from, guys you had to bench, guys you wanted to circle to play. That stuff really can kind of matter. Tuesday and Wednesday, we're mining the advanced stat leaderboard. Tuesday for hitters. Wednesday for pitchers. I have access to time sorted advanced stuff that maybe not everyone does to help us try and get in front of the market and give us the info we're looking for today, which is the big ads in generally home leagues. I know Fab Leaguers pick up NFPC style is on Sunday. That stuff you can hit me up on Twitter. You know, there's other people that maybe do it even a little better than I do, which I'm fully willing to admit. But I am a 12 team point league goat. Man, I, I it's funny, I, you know, I've tried to adapt to the industry and in roto and Maybe I just have to be myself and start playing high stakes point leagues. Like that's what I really love, and that's where a lot of the guys in the top row here for the audio only listeners. Please make sure that you rate, review, and subscribe to the podcast. And of course, man, you know, like the video and subscribe. I'm trying not to come out and make you ask you for a like right off the bat before maybe I earned it. But give you an idea here again, the video people could see. We're bringing you custom graphics as well. I'm not really much of a maven, but I like to visualize as much as anybody. I've been practicing these things, and I think. Coming along pretty good, right? So, not only do you get to see the handsome Afacha Bella in the corner there, but I'm bringing you all the names again 10 teamers up top, 12 teamers in the middle, 15 teamers on the bottom, and you get an eye of some of those names. How dig will be deep. And let's start behind the dish. It's Ryan Jeffers, who I just mentioned again. I often talk about production in baseball in terms of a sine wave. Please don't confuse that with Johnny Chase's hot players because it's not so much of a recency thing because I use weighted moving averages, right? And there's the moniker, waka, waka, waka. And I'll, you may have a player that is performing in the last seven, but I see a decreasing trend, right? So that's kind of more the thing I'm looking at as, did you produce or not? Yes, if so, play. For me, it's did you produce or not? Yes, but then I'm running through other filters to see, you, again, how the trend looks like it's playing out. I'm trying to use tops and bottoms, technical analysis, and rolling charts, some of the things uh, I've written about at The Athletic, if you're into that kind of stuff. So give me Ryan Jeffers if you're streaming. I think he's viable because he's always a pop for home runs. That's the thing that we're looking Looking for from catchers, especially in point leagues and home run stuff. Then in the middle, Jonah Heim. You know, listen, catching prospect, he's been pretty good. I give you an idea how much I like Heim. 
I added him when Danny Jansen went down. I generally would not take zeros a hold a catcher. I did hold a catcher. I really like Jansen. I think the Toronto offense is going to get up off the mat. And I needed somebody. So Heim was the best player out there. Again, I don't give recommendations. I don't take myself. I added him myself. Jansen came back. I dropped Omar Navias for Jonah Heim. I'm rolling with Heim. He looks good playing every day in the middle of the Texas lineup. And last is Christian Bethencourt for the Oakland A's. He's not just catching. He has been playing first. And whenever you can get A-Bs, right, PAs, plate appearances from a catcher that's not behind the plate because that position being so demanding, it's very hard to get out there seven days a week, you're going to have more of a chance with Bethencourt in Oakland, he's not a terrible hitter. After coming out of Korea, I just wrote him up again at The Athletic looking for players that I thought could stick. There might be something there. He has not been a total sinkhole, you know, offensively since coming back in the minor leagues. He's looking really good, even hit for average. The BA has been really low, but if he wasn't, he'd be owned everywhere. So give me Christian Bethcourt in deep leagues. Let's get over to first. Christian Walker for the Snakes, which shapes on their back in Arizona. I've always been a fan. A lot of the um, power metrics and stuff really jumped off the page, we know the context was not great, but I thought he would play. I have him on a ton of draft and hold teams. So add Christian Walker if you're looking for some pop and a player to play every day. Next up, G-Man Choi. I also have him in a ton of draft and holds. He's especially good in leagues that have the ability to change your lineup midweek. Like He is on the strong side of the platoon. He plays every day against lefties, and he matches lefties. And he's so bad against left-handed hitters, that actually kind of drags down right all of his stats. And I think that's what makes people kind of run from him a touch. So you can play G-Man Choi. He is viable, especially look ahead at the schedule, the kind of things that we're bringing you here on Monday and Friday. Last up, Jace Peterson. Get used to that name today. He plays every single position on the diamond. And I think he should be owned in all formats, especially against... And those leagues where you can f change a lineup on either Thursday or Friday or even every day. Peterson's playing every day and at tons of positions. I mean, he covers the entire diamond outside of catcher. I think he's first, second, third, and outfield. So he's got MICI outfield and he's doing it all. He's running a little bit. So especially in category leagues, guy like Peterson, good hitting environment in Milwaukee with Adamas down. Get with Peterson at least for the time being. Let's get over to second base. Now I can't. I coined this one, but I can repeat it and boost it. So props to Justin Mason and Paulie Spohr over at Sleeper and the Bus with the scoping. When Jonathan Scope gets hot, he's 10-team viable, and he's starting to get going. Again, the sign move, he's a very good hitter that consistently puts up numbers over the set, but we know they come in bursts. So what does that mean? Because he's consistent, we don't believe in hot, we run him out when he stinks? No, we wait for him to produce. We wait for plate discipline, solid contact to beget production, and that's exactly what we've seen. Give me Jonathan Scope in Detroit. Next up, Jonathan Villar for the Cubbies. He was, I'm drafting him everywhere, and I looked like it was a very bad recommendation. They brought him in late, they gave him money, he's very versatile, and then he wasn't playing. The Cubs were hitting, right? And so he wasn't part of the formula, and he really wasn't part of the formula. The offense went in the tank. They've had some injuries. Now Villar is playing every day. Here's another one I can't coin, but I can help to boost. A steal and a home run right now. The new, what I'm, we're calling it is the smash and grab. So VR had a smash and grab, always something that we're looking for. Next up, Lurie Garcia for the White Sox at second base. Really, you're just looking for plate appearances. I'd rather have Jace Peterson, but I didn't want to put him in every single position. Right? How kind of a cop-out is that? So I'm really showing you. We are out there, male media net, nuance, context, hard work, the things that we kind of expect, right? I do, right? And that's, that's lead by example. You know what I mean? It's like, oh man, I take for granted these things. I throw darts at walls because I think I'm so good at this stuff. No, I, I know that I have been good because of the work I put in, and that's kind of what I'm all about. So, Scope, VR, and Garcia at second. Let's get over to short. Brandon Rogers for Colorado is raking, right? And in, in and out. Can't go wrong in Colorado. That offense, not really terrible anymore. So, you can get with Rogers in 10 team leagues. Next up, Jorge Mateo. I know he was dropped. Again, the OPS is low, and he, there are some unattractive parts of the profile, but he runs and he plays. So when the injury happened and it, he was dropped a lot, it ended up not being as bad as maybe a lot of people thought it might be. He's playing every day. I think Mateo is viable, in particular when you're okay hitting, right? So if you have a team that has power, then I think Mateo fits. There's so many teams without power that I, I actually I think he's viable. I really do. Last up, Andrew Velasquez playing every day 
for the Angels. I think it's Fletcher that's down, but Velasquez has been good also. I wrote him up as well as a really bad player on the surface in, in this box score, right, as far as the statue goes, that we think can be really good and stick. Angels offense is awesome. And again, hanging out with Mike Trout and Shohei Otani really can't hurt if you're paying attention. Let's get to third base, Josh Rojas. Really doing it all. Again, a guy like, again, all the versatility. Second, third, short outfield in pretty much every single league. You know, he's not really jumping off the page. Maybe I should have swapped him for Hunter Dozier, who's in the middle there. Maybe Dozier is a bit more of a weekly upside, the thing that we're looking for in 10-team leagues. And these are not really the guys to be looking for to stick in a 10-team league. So you're kind of looking for a big hit and then kind of, you know, run. A hit and run. Wham, bam. Thank you, ma'am. Look for somebody else really quick. So it's Rojas, Hunter Dozier, and then, you guessed it, Jace Peterson at third base. Third is just such a disaster right now. I know a lot of people are walking into the Colin Moran thing. But Joey Votto is on the cusp of returning, and when he does, I'm not sure. Moran is not so going to play. It hasn't been terrible. The B.A. has. He's hitting for power. I don't know. The Reds are bad, but in a weird way. They're our kind of bad, right? It's been pitching that's bad and bullpen that's bad. The hitting has been good enough, right? No, they got no hit. People talk about one game, whatever it happens. All right, let's get up into the outfield. I'll just read him out here. Outfield can be very tough to cover as far as free agency, because every league is so different. So these are the names that you're going to see. I, t I probably swung and missed on 10-teamers because I didn't know who to add. I was just looking for the top 10 outfielders that I felt needed to be added that might not. But if you have any questions in 10-team leagues, just hit me up on Twitter at MLB Moving Averages at MLB Moving A V G on a bird app. All right, so it's, that was Tommy Pham and Brandon Marsh that I was talking about, or Ramon Laureano has not been great. I think he's going to get into the groove. Remember, he missed the first 20 some odd games. So you could still look at this as kind of his spring training. Uh, Laureano hits for power. There's speed. We've seen average in the past as well, though it's been a minute that we've seen that. The ballpark, I think, is set up for average with the wide space. So I like Laureano again, Marsh and Pham. There might be names out there better, right? So hit me up on those. But if those guys are available in 12s, I think that's where you're going for 12s. Next up, it's Bader, Cole Calhoun, somebody I just wrote up. Man, I, I maybe Cole Calhoun is the 10-team guy, to be honest. So he's on the top of the list on the right-hand side for the audio only listeners. I'm in two clumps. I try to rank them best I can. But remember, it's points versus categories where a guy... Like, you know, Loreano probably gets pushed down in points leagues and pushed up with Bader, who's on this list, with Rojas and Mateo in categories, right? In a weekly category league, a guy like Mateo can win it for you. He's been hitting second, depending on the split. If he's going to get a couple steals and a couple runs, that's really could be enough to do it. So, again, really nuanced and context, doing my best to rank them for you, but you gotta really apply your league format here don't be afraid to get up in the comments on youtube or on twitter or for the podcast and let patty know how i'm doing speaking of that please rate that bad boy i'm giving away a fan graphs subscription those pop-ups are a nightmare and it's a full year so this will cover your fantasy prep for next year which i mean you're, how could you beat that 100% free, just rate and review. That's it. I mean, I asked for the, it's the easiest thing possible. Leave a Twitter handle or an email just so we could find you and pay you. You know what I'm saying? On me and Mr. Mayo. He is the man letting us do stuff like that. Then let's get into the pictures real quick and we'll move it on to a couple bets. I've been trying to put the betting off to the very end, man. It's been kicking my butt. But again, the account's not really suffering because I just delever. I just continue to lower my risk. So, oh my God, we're losing. Oh, we've been losing for three or four days in a row. Yeah, exactly. I lowered the plays. I lowered the risk. And then if you go 0 for 1, it's like, oh my god, you lost all your plays. Yeah, but I, we risk a quarter of a unit. You know what I mean? Like, I'm really just trying to focus on it, right? We've seen this switch with the ball. All right, we'll get to betting in a second. Let's do fantasy pitching. Nick Pavetta through a gem. He's looking really good. We know the potential is there. It's very tough. Pitching is... It's what I prefer pitching as good as it is right now. We're seeing a bit of a shift. And I think we want to be on top of the guys that are doing it right now. Next up, Dane Dunning. Eh, I'd rather avoid him. Next up, Jordan Lyles. Again, I'd rather avoid him. Though I think he'll be available because of the team and the contacts. But at home, in a good matchup, we seem to be good against the Yankees, right? Everyone thought he was going to get yoked yesterday. Myself included. Three runs in the first. Looked like it was on its way. He settled in. He's actually looked... Pretty solid. Next up, these are probably the guys that I'm digging into. Again, I put Pavetta, Dunning, and Lyles at the top because I think those are like the start now. The next guys are ones that I'm probably holding that I think could give me 
production later on in the year. Again, right now, I'm not adding pitchers to start. I Hopefully, you're not either. If you've been star, follow my work throughout the offseason. We hit, right? We hit on all of our pitching. We're not really doing the streaming thing right now. All of our late guys, mid guys, all looking really good, right? We have Jordan Montgomery. We have Nestor Cortez. We're waiting for Bailey Ober. We have Alex Cobb, right? We, we did really well at the at the end. And in fact, when guys that we were into, like Trevor Rogers and Blake Snell early on, so I think I'm going, our pitching staffs are going to be awesome. So the guys in the middle I'm looking for, Brady Singer, just excellent. I've always liked him. I have a ton of draft and hold. He could be the guy that emerges in Kansas City as the ace they've been waiting for. Bradish on Baltimore. Again, they're pitching in Baltimore. Don't just buy the jersey. He looks good. Chase Silseth on the Angels. Add him for sure. Also, Cody Poteet on the Marlins. People could be running for Max Meyer. I don't know about service time. That's not my thing. I don't know about that. Hit up a prospect guy. I don't know. I just know teams are constantly frustrating us. It's really annoying. I really like Poteet. He is really good. He's made some changes. I was digging into it on Twitter. You can check it out. Put my handle plus Poteet in. It'll come right up. It just happened the other day. There's a lot of stuff under the hood. Really good. Cody Poteet is good. So are the Marlins. Then I have Zach Thompson if you're really desperate in 15-team leagues. And I think the reliever you need is Clay Holmes for the Yankees. He did slam the door. I don't think he's the Yankee closer. But I do think if Chapman goes down, they're not going to replace Chapman while he's on two legs. But if it gets hurt, Clay Holmes is going to be the Yankees' closer. He could be the RP1 overall. All right, let's get up into some bats again. Some of these are spread out throughout the day. There are some 1 o'clock games, and I'm sorry if you catch the show after that. My sincere apologies, but by all means, hit us up. We'll see if anything pops up again. Check me out on Twitter or on Patreon, but don't worry. You don't have to pay. It is free for you and me. we got the Phillies. I'm going F5. Today, again, we got Kyle Gibson against Darvish. He's been really shaky, up near 18, uh, 800 OPS on the season at first strike rate. Very low. He's not inducing chases down here, 80%. I don't, I don't know what's going on exactly with Darvish. He has not really looked great. The velo is there, but he hasn't really looked great. I'm really big on the Phillies' offense. I think they can tap him. Padres' offense is okay up top. Not great. Gibson is like our kind of guy, right? Low and slow, ribs falling off the bone. He's a grill master. It's ground balls. It's low hard hit rates. It's everything that we really want in five innings. Hopefully he could frustrate the Padres offense for 15 outs. The next up, give me Molly. You can have always been a Molly guy. No, the surface stats aren't there. 5, 8, 9 ERA. Yeah, but he's got a 3, 4, 5, FIP. A 3, 9, 3 PCRA. The K rate is there. I know the walks have been too, but a lot of the underlying metrics looking really good. Barrel, blast, contact metrics, all in decent shape. I think Molly is on the upswing again. The Reds kind of stink, so they're bullpen. Let's get the plus money on the F5. So, so far, Philly F5, minus 115. Cincinnati F5, plus 110. And then we're going to Cardinals and Mets F5 over three and a half. This one is just on me with the model. Dakota Hudson has not been very good. Yes, I like him. He's the opposite. 306 ERA, but I mean, every, all the indicators are up over five. FIP over five. PCRA is up over six and three quarters. Deserved ERA at 5.4. The 10% walk rate, first strike right down below 52%. He puts the ball in the air entirely too much at 45% and also 15% bow rate. Lefties having their um, way with him. I'm sorry, not lefties. Righties have done damage against Dakota Hudson. I'm sorry, that's my mistake there. But the hard hit rates, all that other stuff, right in line with what I'm saying. In zone contact rate up over 93. So I think the Mets are going to get their hands on Hudson today. And then maybe we just get one out of Bassett. We get this one. 3 1 Mets through 5 to cash the F5, 0 3 5, minus 110. Pack them all together plus 650. We finally get this daily parlay across the finish line for the first time in a week make this week a profitable venture and then we will be off to the races and that will do it for today's show so remember daily today don't be afraid that's why we cover everything so we don't have to just like smash our head into the wall oh no i don't like to sleep but i feel compelled to gamble you don't have to do any of that in particular in jock market you could just buy single shares of anybody download the app use the code mmn mayo media net for free and that 100 bucks you heard the pricing here players are five dollars four dollars or less you're gonna get if you play if you're truly disciplined and play single shares 
You're going to get 20 whacks at this. I just showed you Jesus Sanchez was stunk yesterday and returned 18%. Jazz Chisholm, our top play of the day, went off for threefold, and that's how you do it, churning along. I've turned a free 20 bucks into whatever. I think it's 3200 I know. I'm, all, I'm deadly honest with you guys. I always give it. I'm tracking in real time. I've been up. Oh, I've stayed over 3 k I've been between like 3250 and 3500 you know, depending a little bit up and down again. And I've been awful. We haven't won. We're not winning right now, and we are staying within the band. And again, that's not what happens at DFS. Generally, a DFS earnings chart is like it looks like a penny stock, right? It's always down, 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 and then it shoots up because you have a nice win. Now, again, I'm not saying DFS has no place in a portfolio. I prefer winner take all, but I've been kind of even preferring things. I just prefer jock market even to betting right now. I just prefer jock market to betting, and as you can, it gets bigger, and I'm able to get kind of more money into it. It's becoming more viable as a source of profit. So everybody. Thank you so much, you know, for checking out the show. The feedback's been awesome. Pretty please hit the like button. I hate asking for something so stupid. But listen, I figure if you hang out with me, I could just level with you. Like, I work really, really hard at this. It's free. Press the like button on your way out. As you're closing the video, press the like button, like, if you want this show. Because it'd be funny, right? This show could go to hell in a handbasket. It doesn't get picked up. It'll be nobody's fault other than we didn't get interaction. And people being like, what happened? What happened? And kind of that's what happened. So, you know, I do for you, you do for me. And we'll be a whole big family. So, I think that'll do it everybody thanks for picking up what we're putting down we're up against a time limit here i really do appreciate you man and it means the world to us download the app rate room subscribe all that good stuff man remember when you work this hard it feels so much less like luck regardless of the outcome and that's why people dig it me you and the quark stats crew all right man i'll check us on the flip side peace